Welcome to Catalyzing Change Week. This year's Catalyzing Change Week is about solutions from the front lines by social innovators. In 2022, Catalyst 2030 concentrated its efforts on bringing proximate leaders and frontline solutions to the forefront. Collaborations led by members from the Global South produce groundbreaking reports on climate and transforming education with an emphasis on offering local solutions. We continued our mission to create an enabling environment for social entrepreneurs to flourish by initiating a letter to donors signed by more than 1,200 social entrepreneurs and innovators. The Catalyst 2030 awards ceremony was spectacular and the awards themselves welcomed by the private sector, governments, buyer multilaterals and donors. Catalyst 2030 as a movement is disruptive. One of the best things I think that's come out of Catalyst 2030 so far um, is incredible collaboration across the ecosystem that just didn't exist before Catalyst came into being. The thing I love most about Catalyst is that it's an open movement for social entrepreneurs around the world. I'd encourage anyone who's uh, looking to be more connected with their local communities around social development goals to come along to Catalyze and Change Week. Welcome to Catalyzing Change Week. Should we start or should we give a little bit of minutes still for people to join? Hello, can you hear me? 
Okay. We can give a few. Yeah, we can. I mean, it's already yeah. ten or five, so I think we should start. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, go, Fran. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Rufran. I'm uh, the MENA Chapters Coordinator at Catalyst 2030. And uh, I'm here joining you uh, in this amazing session with Alejandra, uh, Asma, Dr. Rana, to share more about the long-lasting ripple effect of empowering underprivileged community through reading and through art, how art can also share and show the effects of um, social enterprises on the lives of the people. Uh, I'll be introducing myself uh, and then uh, pass it to each uh, of the presenters to also present themselves. And we'll be putting in the chat um, the, uh, uh, the contact information for each one of us. Uh, pass it on to Ali. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Thank you, um, Catalyst 2030, for hosting this amazing event. Um, so I am the co-founder of Home Storytellers. Uh, we are a nonprofit that creates uplifting uh, documentary films that uh, enable empathy and um, work their way to creating refugee self, well, contributing to the refugee self-reliance movement and the women and girls empowerment movement. Um, I started as a visual designer, but uh, as time has uh, advanced, I've been evolving into a documentary filmmaker, and um, it's it's been a privilege to be able to document the stories of people um, that inspire me and inspire the world like Asma. Um, I also just want to say that I, I co-founded Home Storytellers with my father, Francisco, who unfortunately won't be able to be here. Um, but I know he 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 was cheering us on, <laughs> and um, and he will follow up with anybody that uh, would be interested to continue the conversation. Dr. Rana. Assalamu alaikum. Peace upon you all. I am so happy to be here today with these wonderful panelists and all the wonderful audience that are with us today. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be with them. I'm a professor of molecular biology from the Hashemite University in Jordan, and I'm also the founder and director of We Love Reading, which is a program that changes mindsets through reading to create change makers. And the whole movie, the documentary, is about how uh, if people uh, can find their inner potential and unleash it, magic really, really happens. So I'm excited to be with you today and to learn from the audience with their questions and my fellow panelists. Pass it back to Manato Asma, our hero and our uh, inspiration. Asma, Hakilna uh, Akhtar. Arfina Al Hak. Assalamu alaikum. أنا أسماء سفيرة نحن الحب والقراءة في فرنسا طبعا كنت لاجئة في مخيم الزعتري في الأردن وحاليا موجودة في فرنسا عايشة في فرنسا اشتغلت في عدة مجالات في مجال رياض الأطفال ومجال التطوعي والريادة الاجتماعية داخل مخيم الزعتري طبعا بطلت فيلم حكاية الحي أتمنى يعني توصل فكرته ويوصل صوت كل الفتيات للعالم بالشكل اللي إحنا بدنا إياه وسعيدة كثير اليوم لتواجدي معكم شكرا I will be generally translating so Asma is uh, I'm uh, I'm Asma Rashid uh, a wheel of reading ambassador uh, currently living in France I used to live in Zatari camp as a refugee where I also worked on a lot of initiatives there uh, one of them was um, uh, working uh, in kindergartens and uh, doing a lot of volunteering activities inside of the camp. Um, and I'm also the protagonist of the, 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 the documentary, The Neighborhood Storyteller. And I wish through this um, um, documentary we can showcase uh, the the lives of the refugees and how it can be uh, impacted and to reach more refugees to, to also see and uh, and be inspired by these stories. Back to you, Ali. Okay, here we go. Well, back to Rana, actually. She's going to be introducing <laughs> the, the presentation. Right. Welcome. Yes. Right. So <laughs> human beings are already analysts and problem solvers in, in their own right. Uh, and this inner potential can be unleashed through agency. Uh, agency enables us to believe in ourselves and our capacity to understand and overcome the problems we care most about. And that's how we evolved as a species. 
So when we look around programs uh, that are being uh, uh, developed or implemented around the world, all of them are trying to unleash the potential of women and girls. However, many times they fail to do so uh, because most programs are designed and delivered in a mold where there's no agency for the people they want to help. Uh, they're given the program, they're asked to implement it with no really uh, paying attention to what those women really want, what do they really think, and what to, uh, and how they will take it forward. So We Love Reading, uh, which is a program, actually works on just that. It works on, it focuses on the woman, it trusts them that they know better what they want, and therefore it, 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 it uh, shares that trust with them for them to gather the children in their neighborhood, read aloud to them, and be the leaders within their community. And that's all based on that feeling of agency, and which leads to a feeling of good, feeling of I can, and that's what makes it sustainable. And our hero is Esma, who took We Love Reading training seven years ago, and she's still reading aloud to the children. Ali, yes. tell us about um, the film. Yes, so um, we actually uh, heard about We Love Reading, we heard Asma's story, and we thought, oh my God, the, the, it would be so amazing if we could create a film that didn't uh, really um, uh, document the We Love Reading and tra its training, but actually the magic that happens after We Love Reading um, helps people with uh, to, to gain agency. What happens after people gain agency and the 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 how they um how their empowerment journey begins? Um, because it's not the programs that should be empowering the people, but themselves releasing their own empowerment because they all have this inner potential. And so we wanted to 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 create this film. Um, uh, you know, this is a training that Asma did many many years ago, and until the day she still continues doing community actions. It was those community actions that have boosted her self-confidence um, and that have, have allowed her to discover herself, her strengths, her desires, her sense of belonging, and um, her capacity to confront the challenges that she has faced, because it's confronting those challenges that have made her stronger um, and, and, and kept her motivated to continue pursuing her dreams. So this is um, the, the film covers this magic, and I'm just going to start by, by sharing with you all uh, the trailer. Uh, well, it's actually a teaser, so give me one second. So um, we wanted everybody to have a good um, experience with the with the videos. So we're not going to share them through the presentation. Rather, we're going to share them through a better um, way. <laughs> so one second, it may, may take a little bit longer, um, but it's worth it. So here we go. Um, here is the teaser, everybody. رح أحاول أكون قوية ورح أستمد بالقوة يعني من من أولادي من من الجيل اللي اللي عم بشوفه قدامي عم عم يتدمر ورح أحاول أساعدهم مساعدة حقيقية يعني من الداخل أحاول أغير فيهم من الداخل So I'm going to share, um, to pass the microphone over to Asma, because I think it's really interesting if she can tell us a little bit about her process of change. Uh, who was Asma before she um, released her, her uh, inner potential through this agency? And who has she become now? How has she continued to feel motivated through the years? Um, so Asma, uh, Gufran, could you translate for Asma? Uh, Asma, now I have a question for you. We want to know more about you. ونعرف عن عملية التحول اللي صارت بحياتك مين أسمى كانت قبل وكيف صارت أسمى أسمى اليوم فإذا بتقدري تحكي لنا بنكون سعيدين تمام بس ون منت كأنه تمارا probably حمودة is giving her a hard time yes عمودة كالعادة تمام أول شيء يعني أسماء كانت إذا بدكم يعني حدا بلش من من ولا إشي من الصفر لدرجة أني كنت يعني 
انطر الايام انه خلص انه يعني تخلص الحياه فيها لانه ما كان في شيء ما في ما في شيء نعمل بحياتي غير انه بدي اعيش الحياه اللي طبعا اكيد اني بقدرها حياه الـ الـ الامهات اللي متزوجات في سن صغيره بس انه انه بالبيت بيجيبوا اولاد ويعني هاي الحياه اللي اللي الكل عايشها قبل يعني جداتي وامي وعماتي وخالاتي وكل الناس اللي حوالي وجاراتي كل الاشخاص اللي حوالي كل الناس اللي حوالي خليني اوكي يا تمام Uh, so I, uh, Asma is sharing how her life was before. So she's saying I was someone who um, started from zero. Nothing was really happening in my life. I was just waiting for the days to be um, finished. And I was living just like everyone else around me, which is my mother, my grandmother, my uh, aunts, my neighbors, which is like to live the life of the um, the homestaying mother that that actually does not have a lot of things that fill her life uh, and and and, um, and and I was happy and respecting that but at the same time it was not fulfilling تمام طبعا هذا الكلام كان داخل سوريا ضمن المكان اللي كنا عايشين فيه القريه كانت جدا مغلقه يعني حتى كنا صدفه لم حتى نشوف انه حدا غريب داخل داخل القريه او هيك وكان صدفه لحتى تسمعي انه في بنت بتشتغل يعني كان كان حتى تفكير مجرد انك تفكري مثلا انك بدك تطلعي خارج هذا القفص كان الشيء مستحيل بسبب العادات والتقاليد بسبب الـ الـ الافكار اللي مزروعه باذهان الاشخاص بهذاك المكان طبعا وصارت الحرب وخرجنا من من سوريا بدك ترجمي يس yes. شكرا so uh... Uh, this is back when I was in Syria because the normal life that we would have in uh, the village that we lived at is that that's the role of a woman. And uh, it was even hard to imagine that a woman can work or even do something other than living inside of the house and caring for the kids. Um, and, and this is because the the tradition and because of the way people have been living for years and years before. Uh, but then the war happened and we had to get out of this uh, village and move to uh, Jordan. تمام على الرغم اني بهذاك الوقت يعني كنت عديمه الشخصيه جدا يعني ما عندي الجراه انه احكي مثلا انه بدي احمي اطفالي من الحرب او بدي اطلع عشان احمي اطفالي بس بهذاك الوقت لانه كنا نعاني من يعني من بطش وظلم و بالحرب لانه ما فرقوا بين مره بين بين رجل بين حدا كبير بالسن بين طفل ما صارت هاي التفرقه فلذلك كنا كلنا لازم انه ناخذ القرار ونطلع من من هذاك المكان لحتى وصلت لمخيم الزعتري في الاردن طبعا وصلت للمخيم يعني كان صدمه بالنسبه لنا انك تطلعي انت كمان من 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 الحرب وكمان تفوتي على صدمه ثانيه اللي هي مخيم صعب 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 من لما تدخلي عليه انت لما تشوفي الخيمه من بعيد خلص انت بتعرفي حالك انك راح تكملي حياتك بهذا المكان وكان بدايه المخيم جدا كانت ظروفه سيئه جدا جدا يعني مش مش قليل جدا جدا كنا نعاني من ابسط الاشياء اللي الانسان بده يستخدمها بالحياه انها يعني ما تلاقيها بسهوله طبعا كان معي تمارا ومايا طبعا مايا كان عمرها 20 يوم فقط بهذاك الوقت فخفت عليها بالضبط فخفت عليها داخل المخيم لانه كان المخيم كان بارض صحراويه جدا وكان كثير الجو حار لدرجه لا توصف وكانت هي بيبي كثير صغيره فخفت عليها انه تمرض او هي يعني تموت بهذاك المكان وما حدا اصلا يعرف عنها فاخذت قرار ثاني اني اهرب من المخيم <تصفيق> so i hope that i will have uh, you know will remember everything but what she shared is amazing so um back then she had to decide uh, to leave syria and this has not been a very uh, easy decision because she didn't have a strong personality she did, she she's not used to um uh, voicing out her concerns and talking uh, loudly so but but at that time they have been going through atrocities and they have been going through a lot of hard time because the war did not distinguish between a woman a child an old man a, a man everyone was actually going through this traumatizing um uh, experience 
So I decided to leave Syria and take my children uh, out. Sorry, yeah. Out of that toxic place to move to a safer environment. And this is where I uh, arrived to Zatarika. When I arrived there, it was another um, shock because we are in the middle of the desert and nothing is there. Uh, and you imagining arriving there safely, thank God, but at the same time, it's without anything. And knowing that you don't have any, uh, you will be spending the whole of your life, the rest of your life there was also another trauma that I had uh, went through. So I, I decided to do another thing, which is to flee the camp and go outside and uh, try to find a better life for my kids because I was very afraid for my um, little child. She was only 20 days old and and uh, I was I was hearing the fact that she will die uh, out of uh, out in the desert because there is nothing actually to protect her. طبعا هون ما بشجع مخالفة القوانين يعني بس هون يعني لما تتحرك غريزة الأمومة خلاص أنت بدك تعملي أي شيء عشان تنقذي حدا من أطفالك طبعا ما رح أطول بالحكي بعد ما هربت من المخيم كمان رجعت يعني وسلمت حالي وهي القصص وهيك وكملت حياتي بالمخيم بس ما كنت راضية أبدا على نمط العيشة اللي كنا عايشينها يعني كنت ما بدي أستمر بنفس الغلط بنفس الوتيرة اللي إحنا ككنيسة أو فتيات عايشينها محرومين من كل حقوقنا ما في أي إشي إنه تعملي إلا إنك بالبيت بس فكنت ضد هذا الإشي فقررت إني أتغير وأعمل وأسوي بس للأسف ما كان في أبدا أي فرص لأنه ما في معي شهادات ما حدا مدارس فكانت فرصه جدا قليلة أو ما في فرص بتاتا بهذاك الوقت فلحتى إجا اليوم اللي سمعت فيه عن تدريب نحن نحب القراءة وكنت يعني ما تتصوري قد ايه كنت متشوقة اني اروح على التدريب لدرجة اصلا اني كنت يعني بعاني من واقع صحية بسبب اني كنت مجهضة طفل يعني بهذيك الفترة بس قررت اني اروح رغم الالم اللي كنت اعاني منه والنزيف اللي كنت اعاني منه بس قررت اني اروح واغتنم هاي الفرصة وما اخليها تروح علي وبالفعل رحت وكانت الدكتورة رنا دجاني عم تعطي التدريب وحسيت التدريب جدا لمسني وما بعرف بهذاك اليوم حسيتها كأنها جاية بس عساني مع أنه كان في أكالة القاعة كثير مليانة بس حسيت أنه لازم أغتنم هاي الفرصة ما أروحها من يدي وبالفعل هذا اللي صار So uh, I had to go back to the camp after because this is illegal for a refugee to leave the camp and to go uh, outside So I went back to the camp and tried to live the lives but without agreeing to the terms that were applied on us before. So I was trying to change that because I was against um, not having uh, our, li our rights to do whatever we want and to, to do actually the things that we can feel like we are participating in the community. So I was against that, um, and, uh, but, but it was not easy for me to find a, a chance or an opportunity to share and to uh, fill in the void in my life because I don't have a degree and I don't have an education. Um, so this is when the Wheel of Reading training came. And uh, I was very actually uh, happy to know that the Wheel of Reading does not re require a degree for me to take it. So I took the training and Dr. Rana Dajani gave us the training. And I felt that day that Dr. Rana came all the way from Amman to Zatari camp for me, although everyone else was there and she was giving the training for an, uh, other people, but <laughs> all of them had degrees. I was the only one who didn't have a degree. And being there meant a lot to me. And this is where the magic started to unravel because I directly knew that I have a role in my community. وكم يعني وبدا الطريق يعني الطريق الصحيح اللي حسيت حالي مشيت عليه اللي انا بحبه اللي انا بدي اياه من من يعني اذا بدك من هذاك اليوم بلشت اجمع الاطفال وخصوصا يعني كان شغفي اصلا انه القراءه فيعني حبيت انه الشخص يعني يشتغل او يتطوع او يمارس الاشي اللي هو اصلا بيحبه فهي يعني جدا اشي حلو وبلشت احكي لكل الناس واروح لعند والدي وأروح لعند والدتي وأحكي لهم إنه الدكتورة أنا حكت هيك والدكتورة أنا حكت هيك وكانوا يعطوني إضافات يعني دائما خصوصا والدي 
ف يعني كانت فترة جدا بحبها ويعني ما بنساها وبلشت لما اجمع الاطفال كمان بلشت اتعرف كنت دائما استفيد من الاطفال ودائما افكارهم انفذها يعني يمكن في ناس كثير كانت تستغرب انه هذول اطفال ما بيفهموا ليش بتردي عليهم بالعكس كانت افكار الاطفال جدا مهمة ودائما تنجح معي يعني كنت لما بدي اعمل شيء اقعد انا واطفال القصص كنت اسميهم ونقرا قصة بعدها انه شو رايكم بدي اعمل كذا كذا شو بتنصحوني شو كذا بلشوا كمان هم يقراوا صار عندهم جراه انهم يحكوا يناقشوا طبعا هذا الشيء ما كان سابقا واختلفت حياتهم اذا بدك على كل المقاييس يعني حتى كنا نعمل انشطه رسم داخل لما نعمل جلسه القصه كمان انشطه رسم رسوماتهم اختلفت الاطفال كنت انا عم بتغير من داخلي وهم كمان عم يتغيروا يعني كنا مواكبين تغيرنا مع بعض واتوقع هذا الشيء جدا مهم so i directly after taking the training i took the stories went back home and started my first read aloud session and uh, i felt like yes finally i i really fa- found my voice and i couldn't stop i shared with my parents uh, uh, what dr rana said i started telling people about all of the things that i took in the training and did not stop once i started i could not stop actually uh, i and i and i started feeling like the change on the children and i started for example before i started reading aloud to, to children i would ask them what do they think about that what do they think about the other stuff and people would tell me like why do you, do you ask the children they don't really um understand but i had a different opinion i think they had a lot of things and a lot of really beautiful ideas to share and i directly implemented those ideas um this made this made them feel like empowered and they started actually sharing their opinions and sharing their thoughts um they started voicing out their concerns and uh, their personalities actually actually started to show and so i was actually changing from the inside and also the children were changing from the inside and something magical has been happening for all of us at the same time and and seeing the change has always been all, giving me pushing me forward to do more that i also started doing other activities like drawing and um and i i called them uh the uh, the uh the story time uh, children and, and this is how our group started mm-hmm. to form. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Yeah, I think we should uh, continue. <laughs> yes, okay, perfect. Yeah, let's continue and then we'll see what we do and then we'll continue. Well, I mean, Asma's answer just um, makes us think, right? Uh, what what would the world look like if more Asmas uh, were in it? <laughs> And um, and it's just uh, that's part of the reason why we created this film. Um, we we have this hope, and and we talked with Asma about this. Like, what would your dream be if this film um, was successful? Like, what would it what would it be? And she uh, told us, like, my my dream would be to inspire more women and girls around the world to take action for their lives, to take action for their communities. And so we set out on this goal <laughs> and we 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 made our aspirations really high. Um, we want to touch the lives of 1 million women and girls around the world to unleash their, this inner potential, just like asthma, and act creatively for themselves and for their communities. Um, but of course, it's a big goal and we cannot do this alone. Um, so we are looking for partners, um, organizations and companies who have aligned objectives, aligned goals, aligned visions to, to be able to see this film as a tool for them to be able to advance and accelerate their own goals. Um, that there's many, many ways of doing it, but the film can also be a tool to, to, to communicate uh, what the world that they envision, um, they, they can communicate how uh, to generate empathy for sometimes refugees, um, stories are very distant from us. But through films like these, um, you realize that they're humans <laughs> and we all have the same needs, the same feelings, um, um, and, and, and it's all relatable, it's universal. And so this is the, the very important role that films like these have. And, and we really hope that, um, that more organizations will join us on this journey um to 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 change the lives or to be able to enable agency for more women and girls so that they can take uh, 
hold of their lives and, and continue on their empowerment journeys. So be, um, I'm just going to hand over um, the voice to Rana so she can tell us a little bit more about this agency approach. Yeah, thank you. I, I think one important thing from observing uh, multi, many, unfortunately, humanitarian conditions and situations, whether for war or uh, natural uh, disasters, uh, and even in communities where there's a lot of vulnerable uh, people, we realize that with all the help that national, international organizations offer, even governments, uh, there's something lacking. They all presume that these people need help and that we uh, uh, these organizations step in to help them. And what we want to challenge and what we've seen on the ground, and ESMA is our prime example, is that people don't need people, other organizations to tell them what to do. They just need some support, a nudge. Uh, in science, we call it activation energy. They're already there. They have all the potential. It's like a, a candle. It's It has the, 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 the thread is there. The candle is there. It just needs a little ignition. Uh, and then they will go on by themselves. And that's what we call unlocking the agency, right? This agency approach is based on uh, uh, focusing on the intrinsic motivation. Most organizations focus on extrinsic motivation. We'll give you money so you can do this. We'll give you, uh, it's a transactional rather than more of a human, human approach where we trust you. Uh, we're going to help you find your intrinsic motivation and that's it. So what is intrinsic motivation? It's doing things because you want to, not because you have to, right? Which takes us right full circle to agency. Uh, and, and so the question then becomes, how do I unlock that agency? It's passion, it's desire, right? And it's, it's um, helping a person find the passion within them. And then that triggers that intrinsic motivation. Um, one way of unlocking that passion is fostering curiosity and trust. So curiosity, passion, and trust. Uh, and therefore, it's essential that organizations trust the people they want to reach out to help, and they should develop programs that adopt that kind of approach. And again, Wheel of Reading is one of those programs, which, uh, uh, and you know, hopefully you will be able to see the movie, that the movie is not about Wheel of Reading, it's about Esma, how she was able to unleash her potential within herself nine years ago in a two-day training. Imagine. Uh, so look at the efficiency, right? So Esma adopted, she started reading aloud to the children, but then she realized, I'm a leader. I can make a difference. Uh, what other problems in my community I can solve? And that's all you need. You, she's, and she's going on forever. So she used reading as a bridge to tackle other issues close to her heart. Uh, and then the movie, as you will see, documents Esma's most recent self-created reading aloud project focusing on empowering adolescent girls, repeating how she was empowered to empower that and kindle that fire in these adolescent girls through yeah, reading aloud sessions. Go ahead, I yes. Just, I just wanted to add something to your answer. Um, it's it's really interesting, but Asma, when we talked with Asma and we asked her like, how many sessions do you think we have to document in your project to be able to see a change in the girls? And she was so, so confident when she responded and she said, five sessions. <laughs> and honestly, we couldn't believe it. The same way we couldn't believe that just a two day training had made this humongous change to Asma's life over the years, right? Um, so, and, and that's a true story. The film documents only five sessions of Asma's project, and that's enough to be able to see a humongous change in the girls. Um, so I just, I'm going to play another clip um, where you can see how Asma is fostering and, and triggering this curiosity in the girls for them to understand themselves, understand the dreams. Many of these girls arrived not knowing what they want, what they like, um, what they believe in. Um, and this is a really amazing clip from the movie where she is, uh, well, adopting the same approach. Um, so give me one second and I'll play it. Here we go. Okay, 
فكري مش ضروري شيء دراسه مش ضروري شيء يكون واو طيب بعد هالتجربه صرت صار عندك فضول مثلا تمسكي كتاب تقراي فيه او تتفرجي على صوره مثلا اعطيني كل شيء لا طيب عادي عادي مو طبيعي جدا ان شاء الله بتحقق من كل احلامكم بعد مش عشر سنين بعد اقرب وقت ممكن تمام <تصفيق> سروين شفت حالي كاتبه مشهوره والناس الشاطره اللي بدي تصور معي <تصفيق> اسمعي بدهم ياني اوقع الكتاب اللي كتبته طبعا الكتاب اللي صار لي من زمان بكتب فيه وبعده ما خلص وبعد عشر سنين <تصفيق> بس عن جد شفت حالي انه يعني هيك اضواء وكاميرات واشياء وشفت حالي في ناس يعني شفتكم معي انتوا كنتوا الجمهور اللي قاعد بيصفق لي. فان شاء الله اشوف هذا الاشي بعد عشر سنين. Yeah, it's um, it's really beautiful to see that, um, and we were privileged to be able to see this in in live. Um, but to see that Asma is modeling everything that she is teaching the girls. Um, in her sessions, she is a a role model to them. You can see in their eyes how they um. They are awed by Asma, how she has influenced them for good, um, which is which is really, really amazing. Um, so, Gufran, um, if you'd like to talk a little bit more about how Asma has uh, evolved into a leader. I think, uh, especially after hearing from Asma, I think she already told us everything um, and, 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 and how, for example, Wheel of Reading just tapped on the exact spot that she had already inside of her, which is the uh, um, in social innovation, actually, and social, um, uh, you know, the responsibility that she felt towards these girls because she had went through the same experience with them. She had the um, the intrinsic uh, feeling of not having them going through the same experiences that she had went through. And uh, and she wants them to know that the world can give them more. And that's what she did. She just only took that and, uh, and actually turned the Wheel of Reading training into a magic. And that's what I want to highlight in that training. It Oh, it's not actually just a read aloud training. It's more about discovering your own potential and your inner potential of contributing to the world. And 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 this is what social entrepreneurship is. Um, I always have in my uh, head whenever I listen to someone talking about social entrepreneurship, I I think about Asma and how she has been doing and what she have now as dreams of doing her own, creating her own organization, affecting more lives around her and not leaving that behind. And, and persistence, that's that's what, what makes her uh, asthma and what makes her the social entrepreneur she is. Yeah, so we're gonna play um, one more clip and then Rana is gonna talk a little bit about the research behind uh, this, uh, this approach. Um, but basically this clip um, is a uh, testimony of how when you uh, as a change maker are a witness of the changes that you have influenced on the people around you, it it uh, nurtures you and, and it's that intrinsic motivation that Rana was talking about that keeps you going. And so we have this amazing clip um, uh, that was really I mean I get goosebumps just thinking about it because it's one of the girls expressing for the first time how she felt after after being part of asthma session so I'm just gonna um, share that clip with you and then as uh, Rana will talk about the research behind it here we go okay Probably one of my favorite clips from the film. <laughs> and I think many who have watched the film would agree. يلا يا وعد. أكثر شيء أكثر لحظة مرت بحياتك كنت فيها سعيدة. صدقا يعني. وقت عمتي أسماء إجت لعندي حكت لي إنه في عندها مشروع وراح أكون أنا أكيد مشاركة فيه. انبسطت لأنه جدوا كثير يعني تحمست كثير لأنه أول مرة بعمل شيء لحالي يعني بحكي يعني بلا قواعد بلا تردد بلا أي إشي يعني بحكي اللي حاسة فيه بس يعني كنت أني 
مش لا وعد لا الجنة لا الزوجة لا الأخت لا يعني البنت كنت أني وعد وبس يعني أجمل لحظة حسيت فيه صدقا يعني حسيت إنه أني وعد يعني مش حدا حلو برافو وعد كل واحدة تجي تختار الكتاب اللي لفت نظرها Wow, I mean, <laughs> I, I have no words. Uh, Wa'ad said it all. Uh, I, I mean, I, I quote what she said about uh, uh, the first time I do something because I want to, not because somebody told me to do it. That is so profound. We may think of it as, oh, so what? That's flippant, but it's not. It's profound. We're saying, I was me. I was myself. And that was enough. Th those are profound sentences to be proclaimed from any human being, whoever, wherever they are. And, and for uh, Asma's program to inspire these young girls to do that. And then I am sure they will go on and inspire others and so on. And this is, these are observations we are showing you. This, this is a movie that is a documentary. So it's a real, real movie in the sense it's, it's real life. But it's also, we can see, I mean, as scientists and scholars, we want to say, okay, is that uh, replicable? Does this happen all the time or is this just a unique situation? Well, because I'm a scientist, we invited scientists from Yale University, Hong Kong University, and local universities in Jordan, and we wanted to study this phenomenon. Is this really all we love reading ambassadors feel this way? Can that magic really be replicated? Can we, you know, share it around the world? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, and so this is a, a, a sneak peek on research that we just sent out for publication. And there's actually going to be a session about this this afternoon at 4 p.m. Jordan time. So please stay tuned and attend that. So we're going to delve deeper into the research. But just briefly, we showed that all the, these women who participate in the Wheel of Reading program, just like Esma did nine years ago, their well-being increases, their happiness increases, and all just by volunteering by reading aloud to children. And we found the mechanism of that is this motive, this relationship importance they feel with the children they're reading to. Uh, and then you can replicate it with anything, right? I mean, Asma was reading to the young children. That's how she became inspired. And she felt, oh my God, I'm, I'm important to these kids. So I'm, I can, I am myself, like Wad said. Uh, I can do things because I want to. What else can I do? And that's how Asma started the other program with the adolescent girls. And I'm sure she has a million other programs in her head. And so that's the research that shows that this really works. This is the mechanism behind it. So other organizations, when they develop programs, can take the, these, this strategy as an approach to do it. And not just take the strategy in their own program, but even use Wheel of Reading, which is such a simple training. I consider it like a sugar they can sprinkle on the top of their other programming to ensure that all the people they are working with are trusted and are, are empowered and have that intrinsic motivation to continue beyond the projects, beyond the grants, to continue to do work in their own communities. And this is not just for refugees, this is for every human being, every citizen of the globe, need to feel that feeling of uh, agency, that feeling of I'm important. And actually in, in our culture, which we, Asma and I and others belong to, which is the Islamic uh, culture, there's a, pr a, pr a saying from Prophet Muhammad, which says, everyone is a guardian. So we have a responsibility. Whatever our status is, we can take care of those people around us. And so, and, and this goes beyond just one generation. This is intergenerational, right? And you saw in the movie how uh, Asma's mother tells talks to her, and then Asma's talking to the young children. And these young women will grow up and talk to their young children. And we're actually doing research on that as well, trying to, um, to trace the uh, signature of, of different experiences from our environment on our DNA and how it's transferred across generation. Whether it's a bad experience or a good experience, it all shapes who we are and it's how we deal with it in a positive, optimistic way uh, that forge a path towards the future that is more hopeful, as Esma has showed us in the movie. <laughs> Uh, over to you, Asma. You, I want. You, can you share with us? Oh, there's. We're going to show a clip about Asma's mother, so you can see the intergeneration, and then uh, we're going to uh, talk about Asma and uh, well-being. Okay, so I'll go to the clip. In a second. Um, here we go. Another of my favorite <laughs> scenes. Okay. Has no, any. انت قاعد قاعد يا انا انا انت كنت هيت والله العظيم وانا صغير اكتب 
والسرقه جت معي وراق لهونا إيه؟ اني كاتبها والله العظيم بس شو ما كانش مثلي الساعه تشجيع ما يت الواحد تعال شغل وعمل وما فيش اصلا حد يقول له يشجع له الاشياء هذا اي صف اي س... اي س... قد عمرك كان تجوزتي؟ لا يعني انا تقولي 12 يعني 12 سنه انا ابديكم شو هذا؟ 12 سنه يعني مثل ما تقولي يعني طالع من السادس وقرايه مش على كيفك من البنت مثلا انه ممنوع تقرا ما كانت طيب ليش ليش ما سويتي شيء؟ يعني بطلع بيدي مش مش ما يعني كنت بحب القرايه كنت بحب تضل تقرا من شاطره انت بالمدرسه يعني انت 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 الوحيده يعني شو حسيتي يعني يوم طلعتي المدرسه حسيتي بشيء؟ حسيت انه انا اللي يعني ايش انه انا كنت بدي مثلا الشيء هذا وراح مني يعني استصابت كثير وانا بس ما كانش المره يعني اطلع بيدي كل شيء وكل شيء انا كان بقلبي يعني ليش بدي اسوي بدي اعمله يعني انت سويتي وانا ليش بس اجي بقول لك اذا عشان ظلت ماشي ولا تردي احدا So, so this shows us, this clip shows us how we as humans are meant to connect with others on an interpersonal and emotional level. And that those strong, fulfilling relationships, whether for the, with the children, the adults and girls, or with our parents or, or our own children, helps us maintain emotional well-being, which is why this approach also nurtures social and emotional mental health of both Asma, the leader, the children uh, who are being read to it. And it fosters a community and it fosters a power to heal. And it's all through reading. So it's a win-win. Uh, and, and this is important because that's how we evolved as a species, to be social, to interact, to look in each other's eyes. So Esma, can you tell us more about your own mental health well-being and how it improved through, uh, through your reading aloud to the children and now your other programs that you are running? Uh, Esma, you about how it affected you and how you love the <تصفيق> تمام آه طبعا كان التاثير يعني النفسي هو الغالب آه يعني بشكل كان واضح جدا آه لما يعني صرت شخص آه عنده ثقه بنفسه مع يعني كانت قبل جدا معدومه ثقتي بنفسي ما كنت عندي جراه اني اطلع احكي كلمتين آه قدام اي حدا كنت اخاف جدا من الناس يعني ما كنت ما كان عندي جراه اني اشوف شخص ما بعرفه كنت اول مره بشوفه ما كان عندي جراه اني اشوف شخص ما بعرفه طبعا بعدين لا صار عندي ثقه بنفسي كنت دائما احب اتعرف على ناس جدد دائما دائما انه مثلا لما مثلا تحكي معي بفلان انه او كانت الاء وهيك انه بده مثلا بدنا نعمل كذا كذا شو رايك كذا يلا حاب اتعرف على ناس كنت دائما احس حالي اني بدي اسمع من الناس بدي اشوف الناس داخل نطاق المخيم شلون بتفكر شو بتحكي شو بتعمل طبعا وكمان كنت دائما لما احس حالي شوي بدي اضعف او شوي نفسيتي شوي بدي مثلا يصير موقف معين احس حالي خلص اني في امل خلص لازم تعملي كذا كذا كنت افوت على مثلا اشخاص بيحكوا مثلا عن تطويرات عن بيحكوا عن كيف الشخص ممكن يطور من ذاته كيف ممكن يكون عنده امل فكنت دائما اساعد يعني هاي كمان هذا يعني جزء من التاثير اللي صار عندي اني صرت ابحث بنفسي ما كنت احط يعني ما 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 بحط اللوم على الناس لا صرت اي مشكله عندي لا اني اني لازم اعمل لازم ادور عشان احل هاي مشكلتي فكان التاثير النفسي جدا وحتى على عيلتي حتى على الاشخاص اللي حوالي حتى على مظهري الخارجي طريقه لبسي اختلفت طريقتي مع بناتي مع اولادي يعني بالمجمل كان التاثير واضح جدا وبلشت اثر على اللي حوالي Wow. So Asma says that uh, previously, before she took the Wheel of Reading training, uh, as she shared earlier, that she was shy. She wasn't confident. She didn't want to meet new people. Uh, she just wanted to stay in her little corner. And, and that was it. And then after reading aloud to the children, uh, she she became a whole new person. Uh, she wants now to meet new people. She's excited to meet new people. She can't wait. Uh, she's uh, she she she's not intimidated by, by uh, uh, new people, new ideas new concepts and she's full of energy right there's this positive 
uh, uh, energy inside her, this hopefulness. Uh, and she wants to reach out to people, not just to meet them, but also to learn from them and to share, which made her explore more in internally, her own well-being, her own mental health, uh, trying to understand her own feelings and emotions and unpacking them uh, by reading, attending other lectures, uh, so she became, <laughs> this is actually her fostering her curiosity, right? Her passion to learn and explore, which is in uh, all of us. We just need to, to, you know, unleash it. And she said, I stopped blaming others or putting the, you know, waiting for others. I started thinking, no, what can I do? And that's so healthy, right? Because suddenly you have hope, you have a plan rather than waiting for somebody to come do something for you. And your expectations shift. They're not expectations on people, they're expectations on yourself, which you can control. You can't control other people, but you can control yourself. Uh, and that made her feel very positive, which was reflected um, not just internally in her social, emotional well-being, in how she dressed, <laughs> how, how she you know walked, and even on her family, on her husband, on her girls, how she brings them up, how she talks to them, how she listens to them, on her immediate family, and on the whole community around her, how she engages uh, with them. So it's a, it's a dramatic shift and change. From and it's and it's really due to her. It's not anyone else. It's about just helping to ignite that beautiful, wonderful person inside, which is in every all in one of us. And I'm going to show you a clip, right, to to show that. Yeah. Ali, over to you. Yeah, we're going to show a clip. Um, just basically what as Asma was talking, I feel like that um that change in her emotional well being uh, and social well being has uh, mirrored to the girls um, and and how. Um, yeah, how it, they have also um, gone through this uh, change for for good. Um, so we're gonna just uh, stop here and share that clip uh, where you can see. Now we didn't want to make spoilers, so they're as you can see they're cut really drastically. <laughs> just um, hopefully um, it will uh, foster curiosity in all of you to want to watch the film. Here we go. أنا سأنا يعني وسأنت مبسوطة كثير عشان أني باجنا عند أسماء تقرينا كتب تعلمنا يعني تعلمنا أنه لازم نكون أطول إيجابيين أطول صريحين نفهم الحياة شلون تن ما تكون نفهمها بالأول كنت بالدار كنت أساعد أمي يعني كنت ما أعرف الشيء الواحد لازم يطلع يفوت عشان يتفتح الدنيا وبس صرت تاجي شخصيتي صارت قوية وعن جد يعني كيفت أصلا على واضح كيفنا غير شكل yeah so this is this is really beautiful um, and it's just life lessons that Asma is having on these girls that well, actually I think this should all be part of our education since we're really, really, really small. I think this is uh, essential for us uh, to have these tools in, you know, in our lives. Um, so uh, I think we have five more minutes. Um, so we're just going to open it to, to questions. But before we do, um, I just want to say that if anyone has um, interest in, oh, sorry, I left this from our last presentation. <laughs> we're not going to watch the film in the Sheldonian theater. Don't look at that. Um, so if anyone has um, any uh, questions or if you're interested in hosting a screening in your community, please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you work in an organization that sees this uh, film as a tool um, to communicate with, with your community, to communicate with your donors, to be able to tra uh, translate your vision into, into emotion, um, please uh, feel free to, to contact us. I'm going to share a link um, uh, on the chat. And uh, please, if anybody has questions for Dr. Rana, for Asma, for myself, um, we have five more minutes. Well, I just wanted to add, um, as people were saying in the chat, it's amazing and so inspiring, everything you do, that it's just like, I'm super emotional, like I don't have enough, even words, I just want to watch the, <laughs> the movie. So thank you for all your work and all the impact you do for the communities, and you can already see it in the video, and I'm sure in, in their lives. So thank you very much. 
we need you <laughs> in this world so much. Thank you. I think we have also a comment from Amran wants to share briefly, uh, please, if you want. Uh, thank you, Madam, uh, for allowing me to speak. Uh, this is this is really uh, uh, my own experience about 20 years back. I'm a senior professor at the moment when I was a young lecturer. Uh, so uh, we have organized with, with the support from UNICEF uh, in, in an Indian uh, capital called Lucknow. Uh, Barabanki is near there. And we have uh, chosen 100 adolescent girls who had never been to school. And they were actually, I, I'm just trying to re-endorse the effort made by Asma. And I really congratulate her that uh, we had chosen uh, 100 adolescent girls from 39 villages. So it was a random selection. The idea was that they had never been to school and in storytelling and other modes by encouragement and motivation, they had been made to learn five years learning primary education in just one year. Uh, that, that project was named as Pahla Kadam as was very interesting, very interesting. Government of India also took note of it and they have adopted a program based on that those lines. So I'm pretty sure that it is all about learning. If the deprived community is supported that way, I think that, that makes a lot of difference in their life to come. And, and it's a generational thing. And over the year, we have developed some, so we have actually collected just some of their uh, own creations, own, uh, their own writings, their own things, and we developed it in the form of a file that we shared back with those girls. And even today, we are told that they are retaining those files. They show it, they share it with their own children and all, and, and it's very encouraging. So uh, the, the idea is really very good. It's all about reading, comprehension. That makes a lot of difference and building confidence in the, in the, in the most deprived section of the society. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, uh, we hope that you carry this forward. It's like the baton or the, the, the torch. Please share it with others uh, and, uh, and, and share all the uh, learnings. And you're all wonderful and amazing. And thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Asma. Thank you, Catalyst, for preparing and doing everything. And Ghufran, who had to leave. And Marwa from, the, from We Love Reading. And everyone. Ali, over to you. Yes, I just want to also thank everybody for joining us today. Um, and well, yes, again, just if you're interested in in, in the film, please do reach out. I, I put in the chat um, the, the host a screening form, but I, I will also share our email. Um, and I hope that you can join us on this journey to, to hopefully enable more asthmas in the world because the world could really use them. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. We'll see.